Hi everyone, I'm going to do a live demo of using strings the old way and the new way just to show you it in action. So I've already started up some of my project. Uh, so first of all, let me show you what I'm going to be doing. I am going to include the string libraries. I am also going to make a constant integer. The whole point of this being this should not change. I don't want to use the number 30 here because maybe on later on I might use that 30 somewhere else. If I have to use the same, like a hard-coded number, like 10 times, let's say, I normally want to make a constant integer, some kind of constant number, so that if I change it later on, instead of seeing the number 30 everywhere in my code, and then, oh, I need to make a 45 now, I have to change that 30 to a 45 everywhere in my code. Oh, I overlooked one. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. Instead of that, what I want to use is a constant variable, so I change it once, just here, and it just is reflected everywhere else. I could also use the define here if I wanted to do that. Okay, so here's the plan of attack. For each of, um, let's say for each string type, for each type of string that we're going to be dealing with, I'm going to get text from the user, what the message is, I or I could just, you know, use that, uh, the same message twice, depending on how we want to do, implement this. I want to get the text I'm going to substitute out. Substitute out. I'm going to just get a single character. I could also substitute. Well, let's get a string. Actually, let's let's. I'll, I'll change my mind here. Let's get a string. The reason I'm getting a string, I could get a single character and replace everything, but I might want to get rid of chunks of text at a time. Okay, I want to output the information that the user input just to make sure I did it right. I'm going to replace the characters or the substrings in the message. So let's say my text message is hello world in all these cases. If I got rid of HE and replaced it with um, EH, I don't know why I'm doing that, but sure, instead of HE I say EH. Then everywhere in my message, everywhere there's an HE, it will be replaced with EH. If there's multiple occasions of it, I will be replacing it multiple times. And then I'm going to output what the new message is. This actual this actual task that I'm going to be doing is actually quite difficult with the old ways of doing strings. I think, as far as I know, it's much easier in the new version of a way of doing strings. But I think in both cases there might be little quirks or things to worry about. Okay, so I'm going to be improvising this, so just bear with me if I if something goes off the rails. We're going to have two different versions of this. Here is a C string, right? It is an array of size 30 and this is going to be my old way of doing it with a character array and then I'm going to do the new way with a string notice I have to if I don't include this using namespace std the standard namespace if I'm not using the standard namespace I need to put this in front of everywhere I refer to strings because strings are in the standard namespace and if I'm not using the standard namespace it goes what the heck is a string so if you get in that particular situation, that's what's happening. I either need std colon colon, or I need to be using the standard namespace. And if I'm using the standard namespace, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to put a little comment. Or std colon colon string if not using standard namespace. This is, the, using the next standard namespace is, when you look for the name of a variable or the name of a particular kind of object, where do you look? Using the standard namespace says, hey, look in our standardized place where we put all the names of our, all our classes. If you don't do that, it just says, hey, it's only the local stuff and the, you know, the primitive stuff like ints, they're everywhere. But strings are special to the standard library. And if I don't say I'm using the standard library, use the names for the standard library, it doesn't know where the heck string is located. So this is where I would use the standard namespace. Okay. I'm going to do two different ways of getting all of this information. So first up, say version one, C strings. All right, so version one, I'm going to use printf and scanf. I'm also going to uh, use, uh, use the character array, the old demo character array. And what else am I going to do? I'm going to use the standard you know, strcmp, string, string comparison, that sort of thing. Okay, so I need a printf statement, and then 
input a string to change. And I'm going to put a new line here. And that is all I'm going to do. And scan f underscore s. I always screw up the scan f underscore s, so please bear with me on this. Uh, so what am I doing? It's going to be the string itself. That's what I'm going to do. The format of this uh, and the string format it should be it should be the size of the string itself that I'm using. So I'm going to use this. I'm going off of memory because the the autocomplete here is terrible. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I must have accidentally still copied this. Boop -doop. Okay. And then it should be. And I could double check how this for, the formatting actually ends up looking, but we'll we'll see it in action, and then we'll say a old demo. If my formatting is wrong, hey, I'll find out very very quickly. Okay, I'm also going to print off printf. You typed in and the string that I'm going to be doing. We're going to be filling in all that stuff in a second. And I'll put a new line. So I have a old demo. I'm going to need two new strings. I'm going to have a to find, a to replace. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of different things. I'm going to put this on a new line. Why? It's just going to be easier to hopefully read. We're going to have a, uh, to find and to replace. We're going to actually change the. Uh, I'm going to put an O for old, or let's just put old. All right, we're going to have to put these variables in, so let's put those variables in. I'm going to make them the same size as the other one because it's 30 characters. Who cares? A um, to find old. It really doesn't make any difference. Well, it really doesn't make any difference if this thing is 30 characters or not, right? I could do something else, but let's to find to, was it to replace? Um, not to replace, just replace old. The thing I'm going to replace it with. my R. Okay, so I have my two other strings. So this, I'm also going to need this, so uh, to find new string uh, we'll also get those. I just want to duplicate everything I did here. I'm going to also duplicate in this new way as well. This is what your lab is going to be. It's also what your assignment looks at as well. Hopefully I'm not just repeating what the assignment question is because I'm coming up with a question right now. So I want to get what I'm going to be getting. I'm going to duplicate this sort of thing. So let's just be lazy and input a string to uh, to find input a, uh, in your message. Input a string to, uh, to uh, hopefully that's going to make sense. Okay. All right. So this should take in, give you three messages. You write something down for each one of those messages, and you're going to re be replacing it. Okay. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to make a new function called replace all. Right now it's not going to do anything. So replace all old. And I'm going to have a old demo, a to find old, a replace old. Great. And that's going to be a new, new function for me. I'm just going to make up a function because I don't want to be putting it in my main method. 
All right, so I'm going to put my little prototypes up here. So this thing is going to replace all the old one with the new one. I could have it return void. I can have it return the number of times an instance. I might want to do that. So let's do int replace all old. This will re return, um, and I'm going to need two, a bunch of different variables in here. So uh, char star message char star sub str for substring char a and then place str the replacement string okay I'm going to need to implement this and so that's my prototype here's what my function is going to be it's going to be down here I'm going to put some kind of message at the top saying what the heck this thing is doing. Uh, replace all instances of a message a msg with the new string a replace str. Returns the number of substrings that are replaced by this function. All right. So that's what this thing is going to be doing. It's just going to walk down my message every time it finds this substring. It's going to replace it with this substring in this message. If it's, this is not in the message at all, I don't do anything. So that's all this is going to do. I'm going to have it return zero right now. Why? Temp. Right? I just want a temporary placeholder just to say what's going like this is what this function is going to do. I, this is an IOU or maybe I could say to do. All right, there you go. I'm going to go back to this. I need to go back to this. I haven't done anything. All I'm saying is I'm going to change this, but I haven't done that. And I'm going to say print f the new typing is useful. New message is and then slash n a old demo so I'm going to replace all the instances of one mess up some part with the other if there's multiple instances I have to replace all of them um, and int num placed which I required all right and I could put this on a new line just to help me read this a little bit it's not going to change anything it's just on a new line so this would be what my original demo is going to do I'm not doing anything with the other one yet so let's compile it Great. Let's hopefully see it in action. Okay. Input a string to change. Uh, hello, hello, hello. And we have a problem. Exception thrown. Access violation. Yeah, I probably screwed up the order of these things. That's fine. So let's. I always screw. I always mess around with this, and that's why I do a little bit of code try something else a little bit of code try something else I right, try it again because I'm not sure I'm never always sure what the order is and it's a whole lot easier or faster sometimes just to code something see what happens all right let's see if that fixes its wagon hello 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 Okay, and it's, okay, so it's input a string to find in your message. Oh, uh, input a string to change it to. You typed hello and replaced hello with hello. Ah, wait a second here. Notice I have the message. Oh, that message, stupid message. All right, what the heck happened? This is something that's not necessarily our fault per se. What is scanf doing? 
it is getting a string up to the first space. If I don't want that, I need get line or something like that. Or um, get s, right? I might need another function. Scan f will only get to a space. And so what it did was it got to a space, got to a space, got to and within the first thing that I did. Until I press enter, it was the it was doing this. So hello, hello, hello. Three words all together, all in one go. Okay, input a string to look for. It's gonna be H E and E H. I want to change to E H. And it says hello, 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 which requires zero replacements. Replace H E with E H. Okay, so it's working as I expected now. Now that it, the problem with scanf was it gets to the first white space and then just stops. And so I put three words before I put do the carriage return. And so the three scanfs, one after the other, picked up the first word, then the second word, then the third word. So here's one word. H E is the second word. E H is the third word. Okay. It's not doing anything yet. Okay, now I need to actually deal with this stupid thing. So this is where my to-do comes in. I'm going to go and I'm going to find all instances of this substring here, this, replace it with this, all instances of this within here. Here's the kicker. So what are the weird cases, what weird case scenarios I may have? A substring could be an empty string. It could be null. I need to worry about these cases. If it's an empty substring, they're everywhere. There is no, it has no meaningful sense, right? So if a substring's length is equal to zero, I should stop because you don't know there's no replacing or I'm constant, infinite number of replacements. So a substring has to be an illegitimate string. This has to not be null. If it's null, then bad things will happen, but it could be an empty string. I could just get rid of all of those. If I had HE and replaced it with an empty string, I'm just getting rid of the letters HE everywhere. That would be fine. What if I do a substitution for HE with HE? What would happen there? I would argue that you can either check to see if those are exactly the same, and if they are exactly the same, don't do anything. That is a definite legitimate thing you could do. Or you could make sure that you replace this, you replace this with this, no matter what. But each time you do that, then you move where you the starting position in a message so that you don't go over the same. If I, if I replace HE with EH, or is it HE with HE, it's going to find the first HE replace it with HE. Then find that same HE again, replace it with HE. And replace it again. And replace it again. And I have an infinite loop. So the options of the weird case, I want to think of weird case scenarios. What if this is empty? What if this is null? What if this is empty? And what if it's null? What if this is empty? And what if it's null? For each one of those cases, on top of all of that, I need to figure out if I have the same message being replaced by this, do I keep going in an infinite number of times, right? Do I have an, a potential infinite loop there? I really hope I don't. You could have, oh, there, there is, they may not be always identical. If I replace HE with HE, 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 what's going to happen? I'm going to find it over and over and over and over and over again until it's just going to keep on going. And that's going to give you in, an infinite recursion as well. So, I, in fact, I can't actually find just, I can't just, you know, repeatedly do it. I need to make sure that I'm starting the position afterwards. Okay, if that makes any sense. Oh, that's a, this is going to be a hard algorithm. So, what do I need to do? It's, I want to say, if a message is equal to null, or a message, um... position zero. I could actually I should do this str len is equal to a the string length is equal to zero then I'm not doing squat. Uh, nothing happens. 
I want to check to see if this substring is possible. So um, I could have an else if if I wanted to. It doesn't matter. If I go into this if statement, I bail out. Otherwise, I will do the next condition. So it doesn't matter if I use an else if or an else or just an if. But let's use an else if. Else if, and I want to make sure that they have the right number of parentheses. I'm going to put print. I'm I'm overly generous with my parentheses. You don't have to have those in there, but I'm going to do it anyways. Okay, so a substring. And I want to make sure it's the right formatting. If a substring is equal to null or a substring, and I want to get the length of the substring. So if there is no substring, then I'm not replacing squat, and I don't know why that, there we go. Then I'm going to return zero. Else if a replace str, I want to bail out on this one too, return zero. I could have this as one gigantic bunch of ors, right? This or this or this or this or this, all of would be this logically the equivalent. Okay, once I've done this, all of that, now I know I have a legitimate bunch of strings with legitimate replacement. Okay, and I need to find that what a substring, oh, an F SDR. There it is. So if I have a legitimate message, what do I need to do? I'm going to go through my message. I need STR. I'm going to find a substring, and I'm going to be looking for my my original message, a MSG, and then I'm going to look for a S sub STR. And the capital is there. And I want to see what the heck this thing returns. It's going to return a character pointer. That's what this thing is saying to me. So if it's going to return a character pointer, um, it's where the start of the substring is located. I also know the length of the substring. So I'm going to keep the length of the substring and then sub is equal to str len a substring. Why couldn't I have done it up there? Well, if a substring is equal to null, I might have a problem. So I'm just going to do it here. I know it's not null now, so I can keep this substring around. The reason I want to do this is I want to move my pointer past where I found that substring to the next one. Okay, so I'm going to keep on find look, calling sub find substring, and in fact I'm going to do this a sub. I want to change this around. I'm going to is equal to a. I'm just thinking how this thing is actually going to go. I'm going to where I found the sub, which I'm not going to have found anything at all, or. Um, message pause message pointer hey, let's call it message pointer okay so I'm going to keep on finding calling substring substring starting at the message pointer looking for this substring over and over and over again uh, and so I'm going to have p message pointer I'm going to update what that thing looks like if p message pointer uh, is not equal to null. I, remember, I could just put the p message pointer instead of saying not equal to null. It's like, is there a pointer there or is it null? So I could have, I can just like get rid of all of this and just say if pointer. If the pointer is not null, essentially saying, saying is the pointer not null? So. If the pointer is not equal to null, then I'm going to say point message ptr uh, 
and plus equal. I'm going to add the length of this up. This is going to move my pointer over that many characters. So if I'm looking for three, the substring is three characters long. This will find the beginning of that substring, move it over three characters, which is what I want to do for the next time I look for the next part of the substring. Okay, at some point in time, I'm hoping I won't find anything at all. So this is where while p message pointer, as long as it's not null, I'm just going to keep going, other, and I'm going to keep on updating where that thing is located. So find the next instance of the substring. OK. If I find something that I want to replace, I have a couple things I need to do as well. I'm going to, oh boy, this is going to be potentially a problem. So what do I need to do? I'm going to need to replace one substring. Oh, this might be way more convoluted in a, with using a C string than the other way. I will need to replace the old message with the new message. The new message might be longer or shorter than the old message. Ugh. OK, this is going to be a pain. So let's do a couple of things. Uh, int len uh, rep for replacement length, str len a. And this is replacement string. Let's find out the length of this replacement string. We could have it do this. Um, if len sub it does not equal len rep. This is the brute force bad way of doing it. Uh, return zero. Just get the heck out. If the thing I'm replacing is not the same length as the thing I'm being replaced with, get out. That's one way of, that's an ugly, you know, sort of limiting way of looking at this, but I could do it that way. Just to get something off the ground, if I wanted to do that. Okay, I'll, that might not be the best thing, but I'm still going to keep the length around. So what other things could I have done here? Well, if the length is different than the other one, I need to move the pointer over. I might need to then shift all my previous pointer stuff to the new positions. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a bunch of for loops as well. So I'm going to copy the stuff over to a new position. And oh my lord, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a bit rough. So it would be I. I might have to copy everything over to another temporary buffer and then copy everything back over afterwards to this new position. It's it's going to be ugly. So, so if the thing I'm looking for is there, um, hack copy all to a new buffer. So I'm going to copy everything over to a new buffer, not buff it. Jimmy Buffett, uh, copy everything to a new buffer, and then I'm going to copy it back. Because I know I have these functions available to me. So I copy everything over, I put the new characters in, I copy everything back. I will also, there's also some rather big issues here. I'm going to put an assert. Uh, do I want an assert? I could keep around the position that I'm currently in, but that's not going to work very well. Okay, let's let's leave it alone at that. We could uh, there are potential other issues along it here. So if the string you're replacing with is huge, so the thing I'm going to be putting in is bigger and it's going to overrun the size of my original buffer. I'm in trouble. The thing I'm being is being replaced with. Let's say it's thir the the replacement string is 30 characters. My buffer is only 30 characters, and I've replaced it three times. It means I'm going to go well past 30 characters, and it's going to be a problem. We're going to ignore that problem right now. But again, this is why C strings can be a pain because you have to worry about all that minutia, all these weird edge cases. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just keep on moving. I'm going to 
push where the new string, uh, figure out where the new message position is. I am then going to copy that over to a new buffer. And so chair uh, temp, and I'm going to use this, what's it called? String buffer size. Okay. I'm going to uh, change all of this over. I'm going to also, oh, I could, I can do little tests in here to, for, for this, for the, the little edge case I just figured out, but let's just deal with this right now. I'm going to make a new temporary buffer. Okay. I am going to uh, strcpy, I'm just going to copy the string from, it's going to go to a temp from the source, which is p message pointer. So I'm going to copy this message over one to the other. I am then going to, I needed my old position. So um, char pointer. And so I need the new message position. Um, let's leave it at that. Let's do. So let's let's think about this one. I want to keep what I want to know where in my array I, I have the information. So I find HE. I'm going to move it past the HE by moving it over two positions. So this is going to be moved over by two. But right now it's this message pointer is pointing at the instance of HE that I found. So what I want to do is I want to keep a copy of where that original position was because that's where I'm going to stuff the new message. And it's also where I'm going to transfer everything over afterwards. Okay. Um, let's call it new pa uh, message pause is equal to p message pointer. Okay. So I'm just going to keep a copy of where I was pointing to before, the HE. And then afterwards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I've increased the message pointer, so I moved it over that number of positions. I transferred everything over to a temporary buffer. And I'm going to transfer it back afterwards. str cpy and then p and then this is where I'm going to have to get a p. We'll we'll deal with that one. I'll just leave a comment in here. Transfer message back. All right. This is really going to get really complicated. I think I had something similar to this for an exam, but I still made it easier. I was just replacing single characters at a time, not a full text message. Single characters at a time, far easier. This is going to be a, a string each time. I, I made that decision early on, improvised a decision early on to do a full string, and I'm living with that problem right now. It's going to be a lot more convoluted. So I transfer everything over, and I'm going to transfer it back. I need to transfer my new message onto the old message. So strcpy, uh, and I'm going to then cop, so I need to, oh, let's do that. Instead of, okay, oh, there we go. So I'm going to keep the message pointer the way it is. I am going to change where the new location is. Okay, this is this is getting a little convoluted, but let's do this. Um, new message. Um, that's called the rest of the message. Plus then sub. All right. I'm going to get rid of this thing here. I'm going to copy all this over and I'm going to use instead of a message pointer, I'm going to just the rest of the message. So I go past the, I, I find HE, I go past the HE to whatever the rest of the message is. That's what this thing is doing. I'm going to transfer the rest of the message over to a temporary pointer and then I'm going to transfer it back afterwards. And I'm going to need to, so beyond all of that, I'm going to also need to move this message pointer over, I'm going to need to move over this, uh, the new th the new message I'm going to be putting in there. So after I transferred everything over, I'm going to copy uh, to a uh, p 
message pointer. I'm going to copy over my the message I'm trying to tra uh, try and replace string. I'm going to take that replacement string, put it in the new message. I'm going to p message ptr plus equals and then the length of this replacement strength the string because that's how many characters I'm going to move over and then I am going to uh, so that will move my pointer over a certain so I find HE I transfer everything after the HE to another buffer I then put a stump on EH instead of the HE which is what this thing is going to be doing where there was an HE, I'm just going to stomp on the EH, copy directly it over. I move over to the two positions, so I'm past the EH now, whatever that is, and then I'm going to transfer all the original message back onto this string. Okay, so I'm going to string copy P uh, message pointer, and it's going to be uh, a temp. I'm going to transfer the old temporary message over there. Every single time I have one of these things, I'm going to, um, and so that's going to be moving over one, and for, and I'm also going to keep a count. That's what this thing here has. I have to keep a count of the number of times I've changed. I changed my number of replacements essentially. Int num replacements. Do I have that yet? I don't think so. Every time I have a new replacement increment that that is the end of my if statement that's the end of my while loop so end of while loop end of else just useful to for me to figure out what's going on every time I do that replacement I'm going to oh, then now I've, I've done it at my end of my my else statement I'm going to return uh, num replacements I also need to make sure that number of replacements exists outside of this. It does, so I'm good. So every single time I'm going to, every time I find a match, I try, I'm try. i going to start playing around with the pointers a little bit. I would normally break out a piece of paper for this, I ha but I can't show you that piece of paper. <laughs> I am going to move my message uh, over by the number of, um, so the rest of the message. I figure out what the rest of the message after the HE is. I'm going to transfer that to a temporary buffer. I stomp on my original message where the HE was with whatever my new message is. Then I transfer everything back over to it and then rinse and repeat. Find it the find my message, find the substring again and try it out. Okay, let's it may not compile, let's find out if it does. Hey, there you go. SDRCP. Oh. String copy is no longer safe. So what could I do? It's I need to have the size of my buffer instead. This is how many messages I can transfer over. This is technically not a great thing I'm doing here because te technically I might be moving this entire message, but I do not know how much more is left in that original message. Um, but I'm going to leave it at this for right now. That actually built. That's crazy. Okay, so I am going to try and run it. Let's see what happens. Hello, hello, hello. And then I am going to replace, well, the message I want to replace is HE and EH. And I now get the new message is hello, 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 which requires zero replacements. So something happened with. Uh, you typed in hello, 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 and replaced HE with EH. The new message is hello, 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 and requires zero replacements. So what the heck happened? I need to put a breakpoint in here and see what happens. Replace all old should change things. Replace all old should change this thing right here with my new message. And then return the value 3, let's say. So let's replace old, find to replace, okay. Let's find out. Let's 
this closes up. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to replace HE with EH. And I'm going to look at what my messages are. So hello, 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 HE, EH. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to move this ahead. So I'm going to step over. Okay, step over, step. Oh, uh oh, that's what the problem is. It should be if the message I'm being that I'm replacing is equal to null, then stop. Otherwise, keep going. Even if it's length zero, which should still work. And instead, I didn't have this is equal to null. I said, hey, if it's a legitimate string, bail out. That's not what I wanted. Great. So let's run it again. Oh, I need to. Did it compile? Uh, I'm going to bail on this. Let's let's close this. Just in case it didn't compile, I want to compile. Oh, it was up to date. Great. E H. All right. I have my breakpoint that I hit. All right. I'm going to step through all of this. I'm not going to the bad case. All right. I'm in the finally in the, in the good cases. Number of placements is zero right now. The message that I have is hello right now. Uh, message pointer is hello right now. The string length should be two. The string rep with the thing it's going to be replaced with is two. I am going to keep on as long as the message is not equal to null. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to find he in hello. Okay. If the pointer is not equal to null, then I'm going to get the rest of message. It's hello. Notice that here. So by adding the value two to hello. I get LLO, right? I jump past two characters. Okay, so that's that's so far so good. I am going to make a new temporary buffer with a whole bunch of stuff in it. I'm going to transfer most of those things over to it. So temp now has the, the text LO, e -L -L -O, into temp. I'm going to copy the replacement string EH onto hello. So I should get E H L L O. And let's see what we have here. Message pointer. Oh boy, here we go. That might be a problem. String copy. It's message pointer. It's transferring all it's for transferring two of the characters, but it's replacing three of the characters, I think. Okay, so temp is that. Can you guess what the heck happened there? So when I did the string copy, what string copy is actually going to do is it gets to the the zero at the end. When I copy it back over, it's including the zero at the end. Meaning I will get when I get, when I transfer over the eh over to this thing, it's going to go eh zero and then there should be lo afterwards. So if I open up a message pointer. Oh, I can't look at the actual full the full array. It will be E H a zero and then L O. The zero is being transferred over when I do the string copy. I need to do something different. I need to do the uh, the string copy a little bit. Just I, I need a for loop of some form. So, all right. <sighs> and this is don't worry. This is the hard this is the harder version of it. I'm hoping the much harder version of it. Uh, and I is equal to zero i is less than a so i already have the replacement string length right so um rep a uh, len rep the length of my replacement string i plus plus i am going to um p message pointer at position i is equal to a replace string at position i. This will not, if I do it with a for loop, it's not going to include that zero at the end. I'm just going to pull off the e, the h, and then stop. I'm not going to copy over the the uh, 
to 0. I'm going to then increment that by 2 and then I'm going to do one final string copy of from the temporary buffer over to do my new message and that should do it. Alright, let's try one more time. I want to have three of these in there. H-E, E-H. Alright, so I have Number of the number of replacements so far is zero. Fine, fine. The string length is two. The, the length of the replacement thing is two. I'm going to find the first instance of HE. Found it. I'm going to change that position. I'm going to copy everything over to a temporary buffer. So it's hello, hello, hello in the temporary buffer. I am now going to transfer the, do the two, move the two characters over. So now my uh, message pointer is so my message pointer should be p message pointer is a e h l l o hello hello is exactly what I wanted the h e and the e h were reversed now and I'm going to move it over two positions uh, and then I'm going to copy everything back over again and let's see how that works. Message pointer it moves over two positions and then I'll transfer all, everything from the temp back over so it shouldn't actually change anything at all and the number of replacements goes increases by one. I'm going if I keep on going with this I'll if I just press continue what I should get oh I get an exception thrown. The stack was corrupted around old demo. A old demo hello 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 how long how long is that thing? It could be that I'm transferring outside of what I already have, so I'll replace all with the old. I have something weird going on here. Let me do a quick pause and have a look at what I have so I don't just waste your time.